It's a pleasure to follow Mr Joyce, who starts by saying that the agenda of the government is unfolding day by day. Well, I'll tell you what it is, Mr Speaker, the way I see it. Build more prisons. The Minister said that here in the House. They think that's success. I will not only build more prisons, but we'll actually have them in private ownership. That's what their agenda is, Mr Speaker. They've also indicated that they will privatise the schools the new schools they build. Mr Speaker, they're saying, Mr Joyce quoted, that he will build more roads. Well, the only roads that he's building are the ones around the cities, Mr Speaker, and the people in rural New Zealand who create the wealth. Mr Speaker, they know that their money has been taken to fund Mr Joyce's city roads. Mr Speaker, the only agenda that's going on here is that the National Party is putting more money towards their mates who funded their own campaign. That's the simple facts of the matter. Their mates who will build the prisons, their mates who will build the schools, and their mates who will build the roads, Mr Speaker. What they want is higher unemployment and lower wages. And you know what? That economic agenda of the National Party is indeed being rolled out. We have seen higher levels of unemployment, and we have seen declining wages, Mr Speaker, and that is not good news for New Zealand. When will the National Party government wake up to that reality, Mr Speaker? Mr Joyce had, had the stupidity to say, in a quote, literally to go back to the, that lower interest rates allow the economy to grow. He said that literally three minutes ago. Wake up, Mr Joyce. The OCR has just been put up and it's likely to go up further and further. And the inflationary pressures that this government's brought to the economy through GST and the Emissions Trading Scheme is likely to drive interest rates further up, Mr Speaker. And that means that the only thought that Mr Joyce brought to this House that, quote, lower interest rates allow the economy, economy to grow, they've got it wrong. Mr Speaker, I must speak on behalf of the rural economy. I picked up a paper today and the heading is, does the farmers' government give a damn? It could read, does the farmers' government have a clue, Mr Speaker? It's the same thing. Rural folk up and down this country are asking, what is this government up to, Mr Speaker? They voted the National Party in, the farmers' government as it's been called for many, many years, voted National back in. Do you know why, Mr Speaker? Because they were promised that the ETS would be scuttled. No ETS. The farmers up and down this country thought the National Party would scupper the ETS. Why? Because they campaigned against it, because they ranted and raved against climate change and the ETS, and so the farmers understandably thought that they would scupper it. They also went up and down the country saying, we oppose any increase in taxes. We absolutely oppose any increase in taxes, Mr Speaker. Well, that's true, maybe, except they've put it up. GST's gone up. They said they would cut bureaucracy and cut costs, Mr Speaker. Well, they haven't. If the step change that they were advocating was a step down, then they should have been upfront about it because for most workers in country, their economic agenda is indeed a step down, Mr Speaker. At least with Labor under Helen Clark, you had clear and you had consistent leadership. But do you know what people, do you know what farmers are saying? Mr Guy knows this. Do you know what farmers are saying, Mr Speaker, up and down this country? We've got confused and contradictory leadership from the National Party. They don't know whether their government gives a damn or not. That's the facts. Mr Speaker, and all those members over there, they know that because they're getting that feedback. Mr Speaker, the reality is, and we were able to expose it today, that if your plan for building the recovery for an economic step change is that, little wonder their leadership is confused and contradictory. Because that's the fact, Mr Speaker. People have seen U-turns on so many issues now, they can't tell a U-turn from a circle. And I'm guessing that the National Party will go round and round again and again. Let's go back to the ETS, Mr Speaker. Because what the National Party has done, contrary to what farmers thought, and rural people, they passed a dumbed-down 
ETS. A Clayton's ETS, which many of us think will be ineffective. It's not going to drive behaviour change, which is indeed what we are attempting to do here, across the globe. The view is that we are emitting too much and we should reduce that. Does the ETS passed by the national government, against the wishes, the expectations of rural New Zealand, does it do that? No, it does not. And so the question is, where to now? Amy Adams, what do your farmer constituents say to you? I'm guessing that they're asking the same question, what's our government doing for us? Well, they know that you're confused and they know that you're contradictory, Mr Speaker, not you, but the national government. Mr Speaker, where to now? What is the plan for a step change in economic recovery? Well, there isn't one. The rural sector thought scuppering the ETS would be a step up. Well, it's not, and they know it's a step down. In fact, it's a step down not just for rural folk, but for every taxpayer who will pay the cost and subsidise the ongoing behaviour of emissions across the industry, including farming, Mr Speaker. They campaigned, the National Party did in opposition, that they would reduce costs and reduce bureaucracy. Well, the one thing they've done that's out there for everyone to see is they have, induced, and they have increased every single cost on the farming industries, on the rural and primary sectors, for everything other than the cost of finance, because they put GST up. GST has gone up, Mr Speaker, Every single cost for any farmer, for any primary producer, will go up. That's aside from the increasing interest rates and the resultant high dollar that they will have to suffer. Mr Speaker, many in the sheep and beef industry are suffering. They have their backs to the wall. Many in the pit fruit industry are. Many grow wine growers in the wine industry have their backs to the wall. They had expectations that their national government would deliver some assistance. Well, they're not. They don't even have a plan. They don't even have a plan. They have a minister who refuses to intervene. He'll appoint task force after task force, Mr Speaker, and get nowhere and do nothing. His mate, uh, Mr Horn, I understand, has just resigned from the Wool Industry Task Force, walked out, got his big fat cheque and gone, done a runner. What's going to happen with the wool industry if the minister refuses to intervene and show some leadership? Do you know why he doesn't? Because there's no leadership from John Key. There's no leadership from his ministerial colleagues. There is no leadership from the National Party because they don't know where they're going. They have no plan, Mr Speaker. The area of monetary policy. We have said we need to look at this again because it is failing the export sectors in this country, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, KPMG did a, an extensive report on the primary industries, Mr Speaker, and said some glaringly obvious facts in this. Unless we spend more on research and development, unless we have higher skill in the primary sectors, this economy is ruined. Because the primary sectors still generate over 65 per cent of our export earnings. And if we don't get it right there, Mr Speaker, there will be no money for anything else. We might or the national government might rely on primary, uh, PPPs, primary part and, uh, partnerships, to build their prisons and schools. But in the end, Mr Speaker, we have to generate wealth. We have to do it through the rural sector. And Mr Joyce praising the broadband initiative. What a joke. $48 million that the Labor government committed to that, and the extra money comes from a levy on everyone else using broadband in this country. Another tax. Another tax that he refuses to acknowledge, Mr Speaker, so that the plan that the national government has has simply been to increase GST, increase costs and do nothing to show leadership or direction or vision. Mr Speaker, it's a sad, sad day that all they've done is cut politics, they've cut adult and community education, they've cut the skill base from the rural sectors. They're restricting the opportunities to encourage people into the primary sectors, Mr Speaker. And that means that down the track, this country will suffer dearly. Mr Speaker, they took the $700 million that we had set aside for research and development and took it to pay for tax cuts. And they reintroduced 
instead of a research and development tax credit, a system of grants that is a bureaucratic nightmare. Mr Speaker, the National Sorry Government has no idea...